Okay, so here is my breaker panel, and I'm going to add a meter to the top of this panel right here. Here's the meter. It'll go something like this, and it'll be reading the current that flows through here, which is the feed, whether it's coming from the house connection, line connection, or whether it's coming from the inverter. That will help me determine what my power consumption is. Um, although the inverter is consuming some power, some of the power going into the uh, inverter is, is displaced in heat and, and doesn't uh, transfer to the panel box. So it'll be uh, kind of neat to see uh, how much power this actually consumes. So if I put this one here, then I can subtract this number from that number and then I'll to tell me exactly how much uh, consumption the uh, inversion process uh, requires. The first thing I'm going to do is uh, take the panel off or the, the, the face of the panel and make sure that I have space behind here. I'm pretty sure I've got plenty of space back there. But just want to make sure before I slice into something that I shouldn't be. Oh yeah, so I got plenty of space to work with back there, and hang this up like this. I've got, I've got all that space to work with as well, and it looks good on the back side, so. I'm gonna cut it with the, with the angle grinder. I'll do it from the back, but it'll still have, I think it'll have some, some lines hanging over there. like it's gonna work. I think I wanna open it up just a little bit there. And then I need to make sure which side is up before I put it in. Here is the 
schematic. I don't know if it goes like that or if it goes like that. I don't want it to be upside down. So I need to hook it up to power first. All right, I just got some wire here. I do want it to be long because as I'm mounting this uh, item in this panel, when I go to, to take the panel off and put it on the table, I want the wire to be long enough so that I can move this top of the panel around and, and that not be an issue. This meter is just a small meter that I bought on Amazon. It's like 20 bucks. I'll put the link to it in the description. Let's strip these ends here. Looks like the common wire here is the bottom wire. And the hot is the middle one. According to that light bulb there. This is a little thing, the uh, directions come in Chinese. They do have an English version of the directions, but they are not clear. My common and my right hand. <clears throat> All right, so looks like the button button goes on the right. So I'm glad I checked it because I was going to guess wrong. So the button goes on the right. Let me see if I can slip it through here with the wires attached. Okay, so there it is mounted in that. So here is the little uh, amp clamp, and it just it hinges like that, and we're gonna clamp this over top of this hot wire here. Ooh, I can, I can hear that thing buzzing. All right, I'm gonna hook it up first. I can hear it buzzing, so. Um, I know it, um, it's generating some current, so I'm gonna hook this up first, and then snap that over it. These wires aren't very long, so I need to uh, extend these wires. All right, so I have these little heat shrink joints here. These have a little ring of solder in them that melt when you hold a, a um, heat source to them. All right, I got too much stuff on my desk here that I need to move before I go down the road, but I can see this. I got some wind coming in from outside. So I like to melt the heat shrink around the wire first. And that helps it grab the wire. And keep it from slipping out. And then if you get the direct flame on it, it will melt the coating all together so I like to keep it moving eventually it'll melt that solder ring there normally do this with a heat gun I don't have my heat gun today it's in my other truck can't really prepare for every situation that I'm gonna be in out here there we go so that you can just see that ring has melted and the solder starts to move I want to get this thing melted down against the wire 
All right, y'all. So that's what it should look like. And then we're just going to wait. I'm going to open the door up here on the next one and give y'all some more light. All right, now once it starts to turn white like that, it starts to stiffen up. And when... <clears throat> When it turns all white, then it's uh, safe to move and handle. And I give it a little tug. It's, so it's that's a good connection there. I'll strip a little bit of this back here. Okay. That's what we don't want to do: is touch the wire. Our oil from the fingers gets on there. Anyways. Not actually touching it. I'm just getting the blue fl the flame pretty darn close there. So I didn't see it melt yet. So, you can see the ring collapse and, and, and melt and move when it happens. Although, sometimes I do it and I can't and it's, it's already melted and I just, I think it hasn't. That's why I give it a little tug if it pulls apart. But it's really easy to melt the plastic outer jacket. And if you do that, th then the wire is exposed. It's no good. So we're going to let that dry. Even though I never saw the solder melt. Then we'll give it a tug here in about 30 seconds. Yep. yep. So I'm putting... I'd say I'm putting about 10 pounds on it. And it's... It's holding so. so on the back here of this, this meter they haven't specified the polarity so we can basically hook either one up to either one and that's also why i didn't care if, if the wires were the same color or not Okay, so now we can snap this over top of that guy. He's probably gonna hang out down here. Make sure that's on there good. Top wire is common. Panel is hot. I haven't turned it off. I could turn it off. I'll probably turn it off to hook up that one because I do have power backup here. So I'm gonna flip that off and the backup comes on. That beeping is my power backup. Although, I mean, that 
the connection is still hot because that's the <laughs> It's the line current from the house, so uh, had I touched that, I was would have still gotten shocked. So, but we'll put some tape on here to clean that up, or I'll just put some sm small zip ties on it. Okay. The correct way to terminate these, I'm going to show you. The correct way is not to, to cut them, it is to twist them. And by twisting them, you do two things. You tighten it up on there. Also, it uh, doesn't leave a sharp edge. A lot of times when you have a sharp edge and you're reaching in between these things, they'll cut you. So, twisting them off is correct. That looks nice. Let's see what it says. Yep. So that is showing me voltage in, in top left to to the bottom of that is kilowatts of power. Bottom of that is a frequency, so 60 hertz is correct. And current in the top right is 10.83 uh, amps. And then the watt hours is 116 watt hours. And the power factor, I'm not sure what that is, but I'm sure I'm sure y'all can Google it. To calculate watts, we take the uh, current, which is 10.10 .10 amps, and multiply it by the voltage, which is 116. And so if we punch that into a calculator, we get... Ten point ten times one sixteen equals eleven hundred and seventy one watts, which is a lot. That's a lot. Um, now what the hell is on that? Oh, oh, I know what that's on. That's because I have my heater on. A heater. So, so we're going to turn off the heater and see what it comes down to. We'll let it balance out here. So we have a little increase in voltage. Oh, and on the left here, kilowatts it changed to watts. So it's doing the math for us. Well, that's nice. Okay, so if we include the heater again on this, the watts jumps up past a thousand and gives us kilowatts. I see. So I didn't. Um, I didn't realize that when I bought this. I would have would have liked to have known that, but that is awesome. So with the heater off again, we see we're drawing two hundred and seventy three watts.